One one high fly ball. Deep right field. Backing up Eaton and that one is out of here. No sad. He crushed it. And the Red Sox have taken the lead. Bitch, put some respect on my name. Hey. When you speak on me, you speak on the game. I'm just gonna take a sip. Guys, welcome to Smack Talk. Today we have a great, special, legendary guest. He is not only a DJ, he is a former national champion in full contact kickboxing, vice champion in ITF Taekwondo, international BJJ champion with gi and no gi, a decorated veteran with three commando brevets fighting battles from French Guiana to the war in Serbia, and a former operative for the 99 French Foreign Legion, which is one of the greatest military units in the world. The man, the myth, the legend, <laughs> Solomon Ostojic. <laughs> Welcome, brother. Thank you, thank you, thank you for having me here. Hey, man, I, yeah. I've been wanting to talk to you on camera for a while now. Uh, so let's get it started. What is the French Foreign Legion, Soli? That's like, um, like the army, like that everybody can go in actually like uh, everybody can apply to to be but they they choosing people anyways like back in time you you don't have to they were picking up people from prisons and stuff and sending to vietnam and uh algeria or like whatever all around the world so yeah so recruits weren't like obligated to present uh their papers to enlist right so like no questions asked so as quickly as it uh, you know uh, it, it became like a melting pot for you know ex mercenaries and like you said like criminals yeah. and and also desperate colonists as well. But uh, how was your experience in the French Foreign Legion? Well, you know, I was like yeah, I was I was from yeah, ex Yugoslavia after bombing, yeah. you know, NATO bombing and mm -hmm. stuff. Like I go there and like they actually get me in and um, yeah, I had like good experience, a lot a lot of fun, a lot of, like missions and and like cool stuff like you see today. I don't regret to be there, but I will never go back. Oh, of course <laughs> not, man. <laughs> for me, it's done. <laughs> yeah, so it like for, for for people who don't know it, the French Foreign Legion is like um, it's a striking force of French colonization. Okay, it's so um, they're like this badass military unit that represents um, the French pretty much. So um, what is like what does the pin mean? The pin that you have um, at work, like what does that mean? Oh, that, the the Legionnaire Code of Honor, pretty much. Well, this is like this is my. Uh, my like just like my my unit like in French mm -hmm. religion that was the pin I was wearing so like I still wear at my work mm -hmm. and uh, yeah so hmm. and how's the training like how was the training for the French like apparently it's 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 known well it's designed to destroy each soldier's individual uh, individuality and past life is that true it's true it's true like, yeah. <laughs> I, I I have I have a good one good thing there like yeah and I, I like never say money even today I never say penny in my life yeah. and that's what they like most most because if they see you saving money or sending money home they know you're preparing to leave so they they hate you <laughs> so really? like, if you spend money you real you they like this yeah. so, so that's the vote well, no, that's all that's the first thing but the training training is actually you can be 20 years there and you won't always be on training. There's always something to be trained about. Like, you know, all these different weapons, different. We were like in every like continent, uh, like every pretty much country in the world. So uh, sure, like I'm going to be two years. I was in French Guiana. Yeah. But there is my friends being uh, in Djibouti, like one of the hottest country in the world. You know, yeah. they like, I think, 60 is average <sighs> there. So you would going do, doing training there. And then you go to doing training in the jungle, then you go do training like nautic, uh, like commando training, let's say in Aruba, we used to do with with uh, Dutch Navy. And um, so it's always something to train up, you know, about. So. Hmm. What's the most intense training you ever had? My jungle is like, yeah, I know. Why? Not, nothing, nothing can co be compared but, uh, to jungle, you know? Yeah. So, eh? Why? So I was like, you know, coming from Yugoslavia, you know. So, tough so, motherfuckers, for, 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 yeah, they're tough, yeah, tough, like, yeah, but you know, like, you have an idea about jungle, like, you watch the Tarzan movies, and <laughs> yeah, stuff, yeah, you know, that's true, you so, have no idea. So, you, you wait, you, it's you not a mountain, <laughs> you know, you, you always expect, like, I'm, I was so excited to get in jungle, you know, yeah. because because the first thing you you expect is like, um, uh, it's like your bananas, you know, like trees <laughs> and stuff, and like, you know, fruits, uh, uh exotic uh, animals, birds, 
you know. But my experience, I, I just like I go through one bush and I was in mud till till my neck. In first moment, that was my life there for two years. You know. Like, oh my God! <laughs> just yeah, all the time. Yeah. It so, rains a lot too, so a lot of humidity. Every, and... every day raining. Every day is like. Every day is raining. That's like every. There is no day without rain. Hmm. It's always 25, like 23, 25 Celsius yeah. all over the year. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, jungle is dirty. It's not like you know, like <laughs> you can get a lot of infections and stuff, yeah. right? Yeah, mostly, mostly is like you know, you're getting like your skin in the like you know, yeah, you're like people lose their skin and like shoes, like let's say the military boots, like the new one, like they can stand like probably. 10, 15 days in jungle and they be kind of rotten and fell off. Yeah. You know, that's like how, how in, it ends. This mud is like what? It's like sumpor in or something. You know? wow. so, Did yeah. you do a lot of um, like parachute training and stuff no, like that? I like, you know, I was like, I was scared about like, you know, the, 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 I, no, yeah, I always do, you know, and uh, I didn't like this, you know, especially the the parachute in French religion, they have a, that's a steel coupole, you know, the round one. Yeah, yeah. And it's like six, uh, it's 11 meter in second, one of the fa fastest parachutes in the world. And that's all parachute they're still using. And then uh, there is no one who served in a parachute like the, the second, se that the uh, Duzium rep, yeah. that it didn't break a bone or something. And I'm, 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 like, I'm like tall and heavy. So yeah. that's the guarantee. And they, they stationed on Calvi, Corsica. So that every, every second jump, third jump is a night. And it's only a, a like torn bushes and and stone. Like and you like you falling at night. You don't know where you are falling. You're falling in stones, one or all over. Or eat. Like you know, so you break something for sure. Oh my I god! Didn't, I wasn't I wasn't voluntary because in the in, initial um, uh, training you do like four four months first training. Uh, if you finish in first ten, I was seventh. Uh, you you like you can choose where you go. Okay. And I choose French Guiana because I like I like the jungle to see jungle and everything. Yeah, yeah. And do they ask me, it? they ask me like why you don't want to do parachute like yeah. you know like, and uh, like I, I I didn't like it because parachute seven days seven days training you be, you, you become parachutist with with the brevet, you know, and if yeah if I push you you're gonna jump. Like like anybody else, you know, you don't have to train for this really. <laughs> yeah. But every every time you jump, you risk actually. It's true. Every time yes. you jump, you risk. So like, yeah. why do why do something like you know you don't need? Yeah, it's true. So, what, what does a brevet mean? Like, what does that mean? This mean like you know what what that's like your um, how you say your met, rank metier, you know, like you know like okay. what what is your specialty? You yeah. Know? So mm -hmm. what's your specialty by brevet? You you see who who is the specialty something sniper like what what, know, are, what are what are yours? I'm like I'm a clutter jungle. Okay. So I'm like instructor in combat and surviving in jungle. So okay. That's what I did like after after my uh, uh, stage. I, that's what I did in in French Fallen mm -hmm. Legion in French Guiana. I trained the people who come new, you know, hmm. uh, young officers from the French army and yeah. stuff. You know, huh. I always like scare them and like you know <laughs> make them cry sometimes. <laughs> yeah, well, that's know? how they learn, Mo right? Most of the time. <laughs> most of the time. All of the time. <laughs> All of the time, you know. <laughs> so yeah, but like if they 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 come there, they same. They don't know what's what's going on, you know. Yeah. Then after, like you know, when they get beaten by mosquitoes in face and stuff, and get all bubbly and stuff, they get scared, you know. Yeah, but, I guess but so. There, there, there is no way back, you know. Yeah, there is no done. there is no mama in <laughs> in the jungle. You know, in the jungle, they're and, solid. And especially, <laughs> especially you you train there like to be mean, huh? Yeah. It's not like this is not army. Like you know, you're gonna see a lot of videos. Where where the like soldier doing something, an officer slap him or punch him, like you know, even on YouTube videos, you know. Yeah. So you if you don't if you don't know something is not Canada, like they don't wanna say like good try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can get it next time, buddy. No, they're gonna be like you fucking retard. Do do, <laughs> do 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 one thing in your life how he's supposed to be yeah <laughs> like one thing in your life because everything you did is wrong <laughs> it's true yeah oh my god hey, it's true like let's say let's say you were to survive in the jungle like what are the the top things you need to survive in the jungle it's not like when you do in army this is not like in real real time combat like you know surviving and stuff but like for training, when you do, do in army, like you don't you don't want to just lay down and wait like four or seven days That's to true. pass. They're gonna give you they're gonna give you things to do, like you know, mm -hmm. to make to make like a labri. How you say? 
uh, 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 shelter. Like salt, shelter, yeah. fire, provide the food. You have to, you have to like catch the animal, you know, like with, you have to, you have to uh, secure the the camp with the with the booby traps for 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 un, like uh, anti personnel, like for people too. Like mm-hmm. you know, if somebody coming to you, you have to like get on these traps because you don't have a weapons. So. They have to be killed before they actually come to you. What, you, know? so you don't have weapons. What do you mean? We like super sur- surviving uh, uh, training. You don't like. You don't. Obviously, they don't give you give you weapons. They just okay. throw you in the jungle with rope. Like you know. Okay. Like you you rappel from the hel- helicopter in the jungle and you stay there and they give you after like you know where you're gonna be uh, when they're gonna pick you, pick you up and that's it. You know. So. Hmm. And in French Guiana, like what like what are the animals and stuff that are there? Like what what did you have to. Uh... There is like uh, there is all animals you actually hear about or see or TV, and but just like just imagine every animal like ten times uglier and <laughs> m- meaner and deadlier, <laughs> you know. Even the like they don't know like the wild hog, you know. This yeah. like you know they they don't look like like one from TV. They all dirty little like, you know uh, like you know. <laughs> it's like the actors they they, uh, they pick the prettier they, ones to be yeah, on no, TV. They, they 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 like skinny. They like you know like very like. <laughs> Catchy, you know, like. <laughs> starving, ready to kill. It just yeah. looks like nature. Oh yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> so the, the yeah, it's all this. And then um, then you have a jaguar. That's like that's like they say every every fifth time you go in jungle, jaguar is gonna follow you, and they, he can he, he gonna follow you for three five days. And he's you're al- never gonna see him. Never gonna see him. He's always gonna be there. He's curious to see what you do. Oof. And. Uh, and if you alone, yeah, he's gonna attack you. But like, if it's many people, yeah, they don't do like people watch on TV, like um, you know, this like uh, uh, people jumping on a, on a alligators and in yeah, water yeah. and stuff. Yeah, you can do this because if he's a crew with cameras and and a lot of people, a lot of alligator, he's trying to to run, and you jump on him, he's going to try to run. But if you alone, he's gonna try to eat you. So like, try then, like you know. Yeah. So, <laughs> My God. Anacondas too, like you know, they, they like over over two meter, they dangerous in the water. They can kill you, and over four meter on the ground, yeah. If you alone, yeah, like you, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna, cra- Just it's gonna you crush to you. Yeah, there yeah. you go. So we catch many of them, like you know, many, maybe five, like something like this. You eat it, big one. Yeah. Is it good? But I was like, uh, like. For, from anaconda is like a lot of meat though. Yeah, but, yeah I guess but so. The smaller, smaller, smaller snakes is just that you don't feel. You just eat like a lace it from shoe, like you know, like yeah, yeah. It's just, you, you, yeah, you, you, like eat, you eat something when you pull this muscle. Yeah, well, it's yeah, like a rabbit, the, right? You can't yeah. really survive on rabbit. Yeah, no, like oh, rabbit, rabbit is different. Like you know, but what what is allowed there is these alligators. Okay. And they and they um, uh, caiman maybe like yeah, yeah. Sm- small small uh, yeah. And then they're not afraid of nothing, you know, because they know nothing attack them. No predators, yeah. And uh, and they do, so they they don't run. You can you can catch them, you know, you kill them, hmm. and that's good food, though. So. Yeah. And did you only do uh, French Guiana? Other yes, places? I you know. Do? I just did the French Guiana. Okay. Yeah, so. And how was the war in Serbia? How was that? Uh, yeah. How was that so, experience? So like war in Serbia, I was a kid. I was a kid, and I was like in the middle of, like military police and stuff. But uh, yeah, mostly I stayed in. Uh, but you're not from yeah. Serbia, just for people to know you. Where are you from? I'm from Montenegro. Yeah, I'm yeah. from Montenegro. But back in time, the army was one in Yugoslavia, so I was still in in Yugoslavian army when this happened. So yeah, I was just like a kid, like you know, like. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I understand. I understand. How, how was it growing up in Montenegro, man? Like how, like how, how was the? Uh, well, it must have been a wild uh, upbringing, I guess. Did you have some crazy stories when you were a kid? Saw these oh, stories? Oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like yeah, we were like kids running outside, you know, like playing with the with, like we were like I'm on border, I'm on border of Albania. Mm-hmm. And uh, like by tradition in in Montenegro, they every house they we have a we have a, like weapons. Like my grandfather, mm-hmm. he always like have a weapons and explosive and stuff. Every house we have this. Like that's normal. Yeah, yeah. So like as a as a kids, we always like steal the bullets up and burn the the, the powder and stuff. Make the things, you know. Yeah. So yeah, like uh, sometimes steal explosive, put in plastic bag. And stone and throw in in water and to kill the fish and like you know 
that was like the, the, the <laughs> that was like as a kid you were playing a lot of kids they lose a fingers you know like yeah or, I guess so. or, or lose a brother or something <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know? every day is different you never know <laughs> every day is different you know <laughs> yeah Welcome. yeah, no, yeah. That's like, yeah. So. oh man and like um like what's the most intense battle you've been in like the like you know the most like, aside from the the war in Serbia like what is the like the, the most intense situation like that you've been in? But like most intense situation, I think like uh, we were doing patrols for for Ecuador okay. in in uh, in like on the border of, yep. of Colombia, so narco guerrilla and stuff. So most most intense for me situation was like we patrols that were we doing at night like. We used to go like all night, for, uh, passing maybe 300 or 500 meter uh, all night. So you're moving, you're moving inch like every 10 seconds or something, you know. And you and th that's a tension, you know, like you're always expecting something, listening and stuff. But we didn't have a like straight, straight open fire like uh, okay. situations and stuff. But that that was like intense, like you know, just like being being focused to move like you know like you know you're going all night for like 300 meter and the, when the when the light coming up in morning you just go on the side no talking and you sl you stay there sleep over day and continue at night you know mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that's that's where where the people chewing the coca leaves and stuff you know yeah it's like um, that the, you actually need this you know to get stay focused but it's a loud adre adrenaline so yeah, like especially on the yeah, coca leaf, yeah, you know. Yeah, so yeah, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah the adrenaline goes up. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Oof, man, and um, like uh, you, like what we, we talked about it earlier. You said that um, like I thought you guys were paid uh, once a year cash, but how does how does it how does it work like for the uh, the French uh, the foreign legion? Yeah, like, you pay about like a month, like because because uh, when I was uh, when I came there in '99, they already have like uh, they all, all already have a bank cards. But we, it was like post postcard, like in bank, okay. post uh, uh, French post. We, yep. we have, and it was the by month paid. But we go, we go like mostly in the missions. We go always different missions, like you know, through the jungle and stuff for like 15, 30 days, and then, then when you come back, like you know, your money is already on your account. Yeah. So and the for mission you pay paid extra okay. for every training, everything you do, they pay you extra. So like let's say. Uh, depends of mission. Like you can like go like I think like sometime like five thousand euros. Okay. Five thousand euros a month. If it's like if you're going like mission, you pay the extra. You don't stay. You don't sleep in bed. You sleep in jungle and stuff and doing this. So that's like pretty good money though. Mm. So. What's the thing in the hat? What's that thing again? Uh, yeah, no, like I know I told you like back in time the 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 just before me the French Foundation they were paying uh, people in cash. Okay. There is no cards. It was cash. So let some of my friends they go like over on mission two years. Let's say overseas, like I don't know. Uh, it was the war in Gulf or like you know where they were. So the the like they get after they come back after two years they are getting all cash. Hmm. They present themselves in Paris in front of the officer, uh, say name like you know everything, and then then take a hat off and they put the cash in the hat. You take money with you cash in hat. So my my friends like they were like kind of crazy guys, you know. Yeah, the yeah. French. Yeah. 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 How, what do you think about the French? They're crazy people, huh? Uh, <laughs> you know, like not not really. That's like, at least French people is in French Foreign Legion. You know, they all yeah. like all over. Like mostly back when I was like it was mostly Eastern European. You know, like Polish. Uh, all like you know, like Slovak, Russians. Okay, and so stuff there wasn't stuff. there wasn't many French people. No many, no many French people. Hmm. We have a we have a one like uh, one guy I remember, one French guy in my in my in my section it was a uh, was a no block little guy. <laughs> we always like you know, always like you know like last kind of like broken like you know. Like, yeah, they, yeah. But they force the most you know always yeah. like you know. Of course. They force the most you know. He sticks so, out. Yeah. Huh? yeah. <laughs> so yeah, like because they want to show like he's a French, but uh, but when I started, uh, they actually they were kind of always getting the officers fr from from the military school, French military school. Mm -hmm. But before uh, before the, before this, like he was uh, like some legion legionnaires that they become officers. That's rare, like you okay. know. But they that 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 was situation before, you know. So hmm. yeah, wow. 
And um, like after all that, you went to live in Brazil, right? <laughs> yeah, I was like in Brazil, like close to one year. Yeah. How was that? Uh, you know what? Like I, that's like uh, you know what it's about jujitsu there. That was one 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 story because when I was in in French Guiana, I like I I trained before. Like you know, I was I was doing the kickboxing. I was doing all this stuff, and I I like for my by my passion was I trained ninjutsu, and you know. So that's allowed like allowed like different things, weapons and stuff. And uh, in uh, in the French Foreign Legion in French Guiana, I met one one Croatian guy, and we were back home in the war. Okay, you know, and yes. he was like uh, he was like a sergeant. Okay, so he wants. I we have like actually situation before. The first situation is like when I came. Everybody told me, oh, like that, your first chef is a Croatian guy. You're going to be in trouble, you know? Mm -hmm. You're Serbian and stuff. Yeah, I'm like, okay, if I'm going to be in trouble, fuck, fuck like, it, yeah, you know? I'm here. For I'm like, here, so whatever. Yeah. What are you going to do? Yeah. So he's, a, he's like, um, he called me. He's like, oh, okay, you're Serbian. I'm like, yeah, I mean, I'm Serbian. He's like, oh, really? Okay. He's like, you're going to carry the extra, extra weight, like through the jungle, you know, this, you know? I'm like, okay, I'll do it. No problem. So once once we were getting ready for some sport because you in French Foreign Legion you run every day. That's running every day. Oh how well, long? What's like the distance? Eight, eight to twenty <clears throat> kilometer. Eight to twenty kilometer every day running. If you're not in a mission, if you're not mission with weapons and stuff, you don't do. So yeah, we're getting ready and he comes to me and like in front of everybody, he is just telling me something and he punched me like in the chest, you know, like like fist in chest. So I stand, I'm okay, like, you know, so after, after the running, I wait him in the, in the hallway and I'm like, he's like looking at me, he's like, what do you want? Like, you know, he was trying to like, you know, yeah. uh, like, get you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, you know what, chef, next time you punch me, like in front of everybody, like I'll punch you back, whatever it takes, like, you know, like, mm -hmm. you know, like that's, you know, and after this, we become friends kind of, you know, Yeah. Eh? but he always want to do something on me. So. So once he's like, yeah, I'll come in, like after training, after like the, the night, uh, evening, come in the gym. I want to like work out. Show, work out with you. Yeah. So he come, he's like, okay, he, he's like, let's wrestle. I'm like, okay, let's wrestle. Fucking, I'm like double sides of him, you know? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, please, no problem. please, let's go wrestle, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I grab him like, you know, I can like crush him with my hands. Yes. But like he, he kind of managed to be falling down. I throw him down and he's kind of choking me. Like, you know, I'm like, fucking, I'll, I'll, I'm dying, you know? <laughs> I'm like, well, that's not possible. But I'm, I'm like, okay, I was tired. I was training all day and he was probably resting. I'm like, let's go one more time. Boom, 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 again. He's like, again, choking me. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? So, yeah, I, I tell him third, third time, if you do this again, I, I like, I give you my hand. Like, you like, I don't know what, what, how, but you like better. He's laughing. He's like, okay. Uh, but he tell me I train a little bit Aikido, you know? <laughs> Aikido? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Steven Seagal he's, li he's lying for me. Like, look at the light, lying to me. He's like, I'm, I'm, like, I'm training a little Aikido, you know, it's nothing special, you know, yeah, okay. Not, nothing crazy, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, okay. So, like, third time, he choked me again. I squeezed his hand, he's laughing, but he was sneaky, little motherfucker, you know? <laughs> so, so I go after this, like, in, in, in Brazil. Mm -hmm. First time, I, I go, like, to see one girl, though. Obviously. Of course, it's, Bra it's Brazil, Sully. <laughs> yeah, that's why we go to Brazil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I, women, met, I met her. We were doing the the military defile in yeah. in Brazil, and I met this beautiful girl, and like, and I like, she's like, she was like young kid, like you know, so like, yeah, and I was too, mm. and she's like, kind of. Like, I, I think she didn't like me or like she just was with me because I have money or something. But like, then I call her once. She's like, oh, please come. I'm I like, la, la, la. I'm like, okay, I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. <laughs> no problem. So I come there and I go I stay with her, like, you know, her house and stuff. And, uh, and like, uh, I go there like Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I see this. I go train with one guy. Guy was like one, like four feet guy, 100 kilo. You cannot grab this guy. He's like, you're grabbing the barrel and the barrel is like killing you all the time. <laughs> so like his, his hand is like, he's impossible. He's like, you know, he, he cannot do nothing. So I start training with this guy, Jiu Jitsu. 
the training or training training then i i i call the the i see a newspaper my friend from friend from uh, serbia one girl she's fighting uh, uh like a uh, ufc in Bra in rio de janeiro really yeah so i i call the gym and they tell me like she's not there no more but you can come here and train with us anytime so from the from the north of brazil i go in uh, in uh, rio de janeiro and I, I start training, then like I start like fighting competitions and stuff, like white white belt, obviously. So I, I win the like uh, 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 like there is Alianza and Grace Jiu Jitsu. I win the in white belt. I win in, uh, in Grace in uh, Alianza Jiu Jitsu, like first place. Then I present the Alianza in white belt in Brazilian Championship. That was like huge thing, like 37 people, and I was fifth. Hmm. So in this moment, there, that's a white belt. Yeah, that's a white belt. Jesus. And dude. then I get the blue. After this, they gave I, me, yeah. they gave me blue. <laughs> I guess so. But but the thing is, like, I met the guy from the from the Belém, north of Brazil. I met one guy, and I trained with him. He's brown belt. I'm blue, brown belt. And I once I win, I win him. I was a lot stronger than him. I win, like you know. And he's like, "Are you like Solomon Ninja?" I'm like, I'm "Like, where are you getting this?" He say. My my student training your chef in French Guiana in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Really? The Croatian guy. No I'm like, way. This motherfucker. He was training Jiu Jitsu, but he never told me. He's like, I'm training Aikido. Aikido yeah. so, <laughs> so look at this. That's that's a He's never gonna know. That's a trainer of his trainer. The guy I, I, I beat, he's a, he was brown belt. I beat him. He was best friend of mine after and stuff. He hang around and stuff. Then I come back to French Guiana. I find he trainer of the of the of the uh, uh, Croatian guy. The Croatian guy, yeah. I destroy this motherfucker. <laughs> like you know, hey, for one hour, I like I was like I was destroying this guy. And that was his trainer. I moved to Paris after. Okay. Croatian guy came came from some mission in Paris. I call him. I'm like, come to my place in front of my building in Paris. I pulled the I pulled the the, the mats in front of building on a parking. I'm like, I'm, I'm like, come here, brother. So and I beat him on after. <laughs> so that was that was like yeah. Kind it's of like story. Peter Griffin and the chicken. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Always a constant battle. Always wherever yeah, you yeah. are. So yeah, that was <laughs> yeah yeah. You trained with legends in Brazil, huh? Yeah. Who who uh, who'd you train with? But like my trainer was like Ismail Souza, and he was one of the first world champions. Like in, in uh, back in time where there were like like there were like tournament competition. Like you have to beat like five people to become uh, the first in one day. Yeah, one day. I tra I trained with with Margarida. He was like one world champion in a, in a, from Alianza again uh, in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Uh, Terere like was like the same big guy. The Fabio Gurgel. That's like one of the first, first guys, you know. Like I met met uh, Minotauro, met like all these guys there back in time. Because mm -hmm. when I when I was after in Rio, I fight like like pretty much every little competition around. Like mm -hmm. I was I was with my club. Uh, like, like my club was like like two hundred people, you know. So hmm. yeah. How was it uh, living in Brazil? Is it really as dangerous as people th say? Uh, you know, like for me, it wasn't dangerous. Like, you oh, know, yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I am dangerous. No, 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 no not really this. Like, I'm, I'm the, I'm the guy who, oh, like, who have money and pay drinks for everybody. So, like, you know, people don't want to fight you. They just, like, you know. Yeah, you're a cool guy. Yeah, yeah, like, you know. And uh, the thing is, like, everywhere, everywhere I go, is there is some somebody from my from my uh, uh, jiu jitsu uh, like place. You know, there's 200 people. Yeah. So every night I go somewhere. Tomorrow morning I go for training. They're like, "Oh, Solomon Cachacero," you know, like I'm <laughs> drinking. So they saw me somewhere, you know. Yeah. So everywhere, like you know, like it was kind of good. Did you pick up Portuguese? Uh, uh, Did yeah, you, yeah, a yeah, little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. No, a little bit. I speak like pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah. Hmm. Like, yeah. You still have friends over there? Yeah, oh, they have a lot of friends. Yeah, a lot eh? of friends. Yeah. Jeez. Brazilians, they tough people, but they, I know. but they, uh, 
they like cry on everything, brother. They're emotional. Huh? They're emotional, brother. Like you're gonna see everybody, everybody crying. They like, oh, you like fucking monster from Eastern Europe. Like you know, I'm like, come on, don't cry, man. Come on, like, <laughs> don't like, be a bitch. But come on. He's like a like champion in fighting. But he's gonna cry on TV if he sees somebody like crying. He's gonna cry. You yeah, know? They're, so, well, they're, yeah, that's true. But, they're very emotional. Yeah. They're very religious. <laughs> like I don't know. They're very intense. Yeah, but I want to tell you this about crying is like when I uh, when I was leaving Brazil, um, when I was leaving Brazil, they uh, they like they all cry on airport. Like you know, I feel like very bad, man. Like you know, even my family didn't cry about me. Like <laughs> like this never. <laughs> It's a different they're like, culture. They're like, man, you want to come back? I'm like, oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, they're just crying all the time. That's Jeez. So. <laughs> My God, man. Brazil must be so crazy. Like, for I don't know. For me, it seems like I, like, I, I wouldn't go there alone, you know? Because, I don't know. I just, it, everything you hear, like, oh, Brazil is dangerous. Brazil is dangerous. But, like, we're, like, you know, is it really? It is. Like, it depends, like, what you do, actually. You know, how you how you rest, where you're going and stuff. Many time I go at night, like you know, playing around, and I wake up somewhere in the middle of favela, you know. <laughs> so it's like a hard way when the sun is up, hard playing way to, around, get, huh? to get out, <laughs> <laughs> to get out. Like, a <laughs> yeah, no, but I never have a problem actually. No. Yeah, no, and I have a, I have, I have a like all, I have a, like cash with me mm -hmm. all the time. I didn't bring the card though in Brazil, mm -hmm. you know. So yeah, and uh, and like you know, once the the owner of the Motel, I was living there. He saw the money. He's like, Solomon, somebody's gonna kill you. Let's put this in a, in a, in a, in a like case, a like safe, in a yeah. safe. I'm like, no, brother. Like, I'm like, <laughs> someone's gonna I'm like, steal I the safe. I don't know. I don't believe in safe. <laughs> I don't believe the, in the story, safes. the story, story about my one of my friends in in Rio, the fat, big, fat American guy. Okay, he's like, he's always lying that he's just captain, whatever, like. Talking to Bush and like shit, like oh, you know okay, this okay. American yeah. American bullshit story. Of course, story. always. So and uh, he said, I'm in hotel once and I'm getting out in hotel and the one is one guy calling me. He's like, Hey, Gordo, call. Hey, fat guy, <laughs> come here. He's like, What? And I then he's like, I'm looking. He's like, Why is he calling me, fat guy? And then this guy is like with the gun. He's telling him, Come here. So the the they were like they, it was like robbery. So they make him carrying the safe on his back to the car. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so, so he said, like, I have like back pain for like for a year after. But they forced him to carry hey, the safe. <laughs> Go, that here. guy carried the safe to the car. <laughs> and and like, they, they didn't know him. It was just like random. No, no, no. no. They, they, like, hey, they, they seem like big guy, like fat guy, like, oh, he's going to carry the safe for us. Like, With they the gun? <laughs> yeah, no choice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't have this experience, but yeah, it was, that was funny. My God, man. Yeah, what man. a. Yeah. <laughs> it's another world. Yeah, no, it's, it's other world. And it, like people are poor, yeah. they're gonna do everything for money. Like you know, even kids, you know, huh? Yeah, yeah. But back time, like I grew up in a country like this, uh, like this war, war there and crushed. Like, and know, like they, you go through the park, the kids they're gonna be with gun there and take your shoes off. You, you know, be you used to have this Nike, like shoes. If you're having nice shoes, they're gonna take your shoes off. Like you know, in park, <laughs> they just surround you with guns. What are you gonna do? Like take your shoes off and walk through the park? Yeah. <laughs> like, like nothing happened. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah, no. Montenegro would like, uh, like, like, growing up there. Like, was it? Uh, was there? Were there a lot of situations like that too? Or, well, no, like, I, 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 I grew up in Bosnia. Actually, I'm born okay. in Montenegro, but really? I grew up in Bosnia, and it was like a back uh, in like communist kind of era. Like, you know, everything was safe. Like you know, it wasn't like this. So after the war, like in nineties, nineties, everything, everything changed. Like that. Really? That so it was safer all, before. Oh, before it was safe. It's like Cuba today. You know, people is like, yeah, like Cuba is not safe and stuff. I'm like, are you kidding me, man? Like go in Mexico and we'll see what is not safe. In Cuba, you can sleep on the street. Nobody's gonna touch you. You know. Yeah. You like Cuba? So like, it's I nice. like Cuba. Yeah. yeah. Like in people and like you know that's uh, like. <laughs> But people don't know. It's like a communist store. They're gonna eat you probably. They can, they, <laughs> they, they cannibals and stuff, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, yeah, I like Cuba actually. Yeah, I'm good. What's your favorite country to travel to? Uh, You've been everywhere. Yeah, favorite country for now. It's mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's mine. You know, like people like, like they don't never take a time to actually know their own country. Every country is beautiful. That's true. And like the, what they what they say, like you know, I have like a lot of Serbian friends here. Is like, yeah, bro, 
there is no girls here, you know, or like back home, you know how beautiful they are, or like how the girls are in Brazil. You know, if, if you feel good, ever everywhere is like beautiful girls. That's like true. you know, go on market here in Ottawa, yeah. like summertime, you'll see like oh you yeah, know, like you know, like but they all like yeah, you like, they're looking for some somewhere else. That's what I say for a country. Every country is beautiful, you know. Just like have to take a time to know, you know. Like, so, yeah. yeah, and you took the time to know Brazil, yeah. like pretty much all of Europe yeah. too. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, yeah, I, like, I travel everywhere pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But my favorite place to to go is actually Hawaii. Really? Hawaii. Yeah. How was that? Because like yeah, it's beautiful. Like is like there is beach, there is everything. But if you wanna go crazy in restaurants or like in like town, like you know party and stuff. Everything is there, like, mm. you know, you have everything, you know, most expensive restaurant, everything, but like, again, you're on the beach. Yeah. You know, this, so. Back in your days, man, back when you were young, Solly, what was your like craziest party story, man? Like, like going around Europe, like, like, what's the story that you remember the most? The party. Yeah, parties, man. Cause you're, you're a legend yeah. when it comes to parties. Yeah. <laughs> when you were younger, when you were younger. <laughs> I like most, most this, uh, the most this like crazy stories, like everybody says, like you, it's like you wake up. And yeah. like you know what something happened, like you know, <laughs> you know, don't remember. Yeah, you, you don't know, but you know, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you don't remember, you know. So like people used to party harder. It was like a lot like techno, techno like uh, scene, like you know, like scooter. People don't know who is scooter here. Like you yeah, know, who like is scooter? Here. Scooter. You know, they call me Mañana. How much is the fish? And no. this guy never hear no. about yeah no. scooter okay check this guy like that was the parties back in time like yeah. huge parties techno and, and people stuff, don't know yeah. you're you're a dj too man like you, you've done a lot of yeah. events i did like before i like dj a lot like last year i would dj in montenegro yeah. for one month on one island and stuff like every day but like uh, every day honestly one month that's too much like you just get tired yeah you know? and like even it's like tourist place you cannot just play whatever you want like you know it's like it's like mostly it has like, to be like uh, mainstream yeah, like basic yeah. stuff yeah so it's not that fun but like you know if you drink it's always fun what do you like house yeah house. you're like, like house yeah, huh like yeah sure yeah me too so, i like yeah. that too so but like yeah when you drink everything is fun any music you know <laughs> yeah, once right. i remember like going uh in uh in mont and there is like this like this place they play in country i never listened country in my life but it was like crazy night, you know. Like yeah, when you, you drink, fell in love with country. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you when you with good friends and like you know, so yeah, fun. Yeah, it's cool. And why did you come to Canada after? Yeah, I like I, I lived in Paris. Yeah, okay. Like that, doing security there. How I was that. I, I have my Paris crew. is pretty. It's tough, yeah. Yeah. So a lot, a lot like um, a lot tougher, obviously, than than Canada, like Paris. Yeah, a lot I, of violence. I, yeah, violence. Yeah, sure. Like and tourists and stuff, especially Americans. Yeah, because yeah. they they come to you. It's, it's like, always fucking Americans. They know, huh? they're like it's not what they they're gonna say. Like yeah, like what the fuck? Like you know, you think like I'm I'm from Bronx. Yeah, like I crashed <laughs> your face. Then I broke his nose. And he's like uh, like you know, like <laughs> he's like I just say you know. I'm like don't say if you don't want to do it. Exactly. You know? so, yeah, and you're not so, in Bronx, so, right? So, you're not yeah. in the Bronx right now. But I have guys working with me. I kind of make a little little French war on Legion. In 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 my in my in my security company, people, you made a SWAT team. Yeah, SWAT team from people know papers and stuff. Even police, they never touch us. Like, they were never ask us for papers or something. You know, like they know we do the job and they don't care. You know, we beat million people there. Hmm. You know, and they they never they never <laughs> police come and they just like okay done. We wash the blood from the from the street with 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 like cans of water and stuff. But like yeah, <laughs> it's the irrigation uh, yeah. system. Man. But nobody have papers. I have a skinny guy now. He live in Arizona, very skinny guy. Jangada, Anderson Jangada, Brazilian guy, very good boxer. And everybody go on him, but like. Every one punch done, you know, he's killed, killed. But this guy was so smart. He was like he 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 learned from the little book like German. He speak with accent, you know. So so when he speak like it is incredible. So I have like a little little like jobs like the Arab people when they come from like whatever like you know they all prints they all need security they all pay good. So I was like always sending like couple guys or I work, we make good money. Yeah. yeah. So one time I said, Jangada, hey, brother, like, you know, if you, you speak English, you, I, I'll, give, I'll give you a job, like, you know, like, you know, like, like, it's good paid and stuff. He's like, he's like, when is the job? He's like, I'm like in, in 10 days. 
I can learn. <laughs> and we were laughing, but probably he will do, brother. Like, you know, we'll you do. learned a full no, language no, in 10 days. No, no, he didn't do, but, like, <laughs> I, but, but, but he can do. But it was funny. He's like, how much 10 days? So I can learn. <laughs> yeah, no problem. So, but now you have a PhD living in Arizona. Holy shit. He's a very smart guy, though, but a very good boxer, you know. So. Fuck. So, yeah. There's and a lot of, you, yeah, you must have, uh, you must have a, a lot of uh, crazy connections from uh, all your, uh, well, your experiences. Oh, for yeah, sure. for sure, for sure. I just, I was just like last week, I was in, in Dominican and like I show you, the, I'll show you here. Uh, like, I, like on, on, on airport, I have a car waiting for me, sir, black suburban with two armed bodyguards and stuff, you know. My so you, friend, you got connections my, over, my, yeah. friend, my friend just opened a restaurant there. Is Drago Grill. If somebody go to Punta Cana, go to Drago Grill, there you, you go, see Drago it. Grill. The guy, the on, on night of the opening restaurant, he fly the the ham from Spain by private plane. Yeah. He came to the, the Iberico. <laughs> yeah. yeah, by private plane, just ham came from Spain. Wow, you know, so <laughs> well, that's the guy. I went to the I, I went to two restaurants that you recommended <laughs> me for in Barcelona. Yeah, they were amazing, bro. Yeah, no, like yeah, no, I love restaurants. That's what I'm telling you. In Hawaii, if you want to go restaurant, yeah, you yeah. go like amazing restaurants though. So it's not like uh, like uh, Dominican or like Mexico or something. Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. So, that's true. The food. So, well, yeah. Mexico, the yeah. food is good. It's yeah. just that you know, if yeah. it's different they have to quality. know the places too. Yeah. So. Mm. Yeah, and uh, like uh, when you said Paris, like do you get a um, like a free citizenship? No, I like uh, uh, he, like we do after three after three years, like after three so years. So officially, like, you're Canadian and yeah, I, French. I, I, no, I'm like I'm I'm just Canadian. Okay, because Montenegro, my country, they don't they don't accept dual citizenship. So I don't have a papers in my country. Even I have a I have a house there and land and everything. They don't give me like papers. They're like, oh, you have to like scrub the canadian papers we're gonna give you really yeah i'm like not not for now like, you know? <laughs> yeah yeah we'll <laughs> see no we'll see yeah so yeah so you know so I, I left before before actually arranging this but after three years working in in france doesn't matter army or anywhere like you you can ask like for the papers obviously yeah like pretty much everything. did you like uh, how long did you live in france for uh, all all together about like six years I think. Yeah, did you yeah. like it or? Yeah, yeah, I like it. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Yeah, no, it was Would like you go back? Paris, Paris, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Like Paris is like you know. Honestly, my friends they all kind of in same position uh, today. Like all like little businesses. All you make money, but you spend like you know. Mm -hmm. It's like they don't let you really buy the house like in Canada. You know, like buy house and. Uh, pay the mortgage you know <laughs> what do you mean it's different in france it's different in france like you know you have like uh, i think like it's a lot more difficult to buy the house more expensive like oh know, yeah of so course it's expensive like paris yeah <sighs> and when, when did you start your um uh, tree services talk, talk to oh. people about that man you're rated fucking five stars <laughs> brother you have the best service in, in ottawa you know i start like um solomon tree services uh, yeah, solomon for people tree, that doesn't solomon, know solomon yes. tree service yeah so I start uh, like f six, seven years because I have a, I own the two gyms here in Ottawa. Okay. And I own I, I have like a ninjutsu club in Ottawa, back in time, and uh, I was training people uh, like some. I have a good clients and everything, but I start cutting tree. Like one friend called me for his father to cut a tree, and I bought a. I remember electric chainsaw with cable. So I was pulling the cable. I climbed the tree and I was pulling the cable up and cutting tree and stuff. And it was good money. So I'm like, okay, I can do this. You know, like, you know, and I start like climbing because in French Phone Legion, we, in the jungle, when we do like uh, taking a GPS point, you have to climb tall trees because okay. if you're on the ground, you don't see nothing. There is no sky. So you have to climb there like kind of without equipment. You just put like a belt around feet and you climb tall tree to take a GPS point. You give a, you give a numbers to the guy on the ground. So we kind of know where we are as... Uh, as there is no maps in the jungle, it's like a, like ocean, you know, you don't know how deep is in what places. Now, ocean, maybe they know, but jungle, they don't know. It's like water, it's like hill, it's like, you know, where you're going. Once on the ground, you, there is no map that works. So GPS point kind of can show you, uh, you on a map, you find where you are, you know. Yeah. But in 73, 1973, 20 people from French Polynesia, they go, get in on mission. They never come, came back and they never find them. Why? Yeah, because they just get in the jungle. What we do, it's like it's like a like a, if you tell this to somebody, uh, people are gonna laugh. We pull the little little rope behind us for like twenty kilometer, 
we la- leave a rope behind us, the little rope, to to find the way back. Yeah. Because even you cut everything and you pass through, like in 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 five days, jungle just closed behind. You. There is no way you can run. And there's apart. no there's no reference yeah. point, right? No, no, yeah. no, no, no. So you you go and you feel follow this rope. Even if it's broken, you can you can find them. And you follow this rope other way, like you're gonna be. Even you expert in navigation, is gonna be like difficult to 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 go because how we do. One guy is uh, keeping the compass. Other guy is going. 50, uh, 30, 50 meter in front, and and you like the guy who keep compass. The, he telling me left, right. So that's how ha, kinda they keeping the direction. We call this azimut brutal. You know, you just go straight, <laughs> or go straight through, because even if if it's water or something, you go through. You don't go around. Once you go around, you are losing the direction. You know, you can go like for five days and come to the same place. You know, in, in jungle, when you get lost, in the moment you get lost, it, the, the, you should just you, you just stay on 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 a place. You don't go around because when you try to find the the way you get back, even more that's, lost. that's when you get packed. You know, oh my you know, God. just stay in, in the space, in the place. Then you have a, like different technique to actually call other people. There is like the, these big trees, huge trees, like you know that they, they have a stabilizers like a rocket. You know these trees, like when they sending it, they have like a on the side they have like this, that's like a like a like a like a kind of like stabilizer. Yeah, thing, okay. You know? Yeah. So you hit this, and this this noise can go like for kilometers far. You know. Mm. So this kind of stuff, yeah. So you use the so you use your your, well the skills you acquired to like climb trees and stuff to for your business yeah. pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. No. Now now you use like. And now it's just and, fucking easy. Uh, no, it's for you. Kind of, it's kind of easy, but like you know, again, uh, but what I do, I cut in the middle of downtown, like trees like eighty feet tall and stuff, like you know, around it's, like it's, old buildings. It's, it's and... No, no much space to throw things down, you know. Uh, it's a like it's da- dangerous job. Like it's paid, yeah. It's dangerous, but it's like a lot of responsibility too. Yeah. Even you in- insured and everything, you don't wanna, you don't wanna like uh, throw something uh, like on a fence or something because or on a car. E- even even you fix after it doesn't look good, you know. No, w- yeah. w- once you do, you know, like when you do something good, yeah. Like like with your girlfriend, yeah. You do all good good all life, and once you do a little bad. All what it, what you do good doesn't it's, matter. It's forget it. Yes, it is. Yeah, you do one little thing and it's done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You do one little thing. She gonna all be. All the coffee you buy. All the coffee. You were always like that. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. were always like that. <laughs> yeah. Oh fuck, man. Yeah, that's the people too. That's yeah, true. Once you do wrong, everybody. If you do one negative, a negative review. That's why the one of people gonna see. And you yeah. don't have you don't have any negative reviews. You I don't. Five star. I don't. I don't. Yeah, right. I don't because honestly, sometimes good service, man. So, good service, but like uh, sometimes people they go like very hard. Like you know, they go on me. They call me, calling me back. But every time they call me, I go back if something is like going on to clean up or something. Some, yeah, yeah. Some houses I go two, three times to clean the dust to like everything. They just call me back, and I, I go. I don't I don't tell them like okay, like uh, that it's done, you know. No, I go back till they say like okay. But, but these kind of people, they're never gonna say okay. They're gonna be like, okay, I'll uh, I'll deal with this. I deal with what? I finish everything. It's yeah. done, you know. Yeah. But they're never gonna let you go satisfied. They wanna be always like oh, you know. Yeah. I have on the, on a yellow page or somewhere. I have a review, and I l- remember this lady. I go there. I help her and like do everything, like you know, explain to her. And she write this in review. She's like Solomon came here, helped me. He was great guy and stuff. Uh, four stars. She put me four stars instead of five. It's like because some people think like you know, yeah, no, nobody, nobody, nobody deserve five stars. You cannot be perfect, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, you know, oh, whatever. So then now, now you're going back and cleaning up dust. For oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna be like you know. I don't want to say everything I can. I have to do, you know. Yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> yeah. Oh my so, god, dude. Um, um I, about the uh, let's go back to the BJJ, man. Yeah, like you you haven't uh, talked about it very much, and I want to I want to go more in depth. Like, what are the different uh, like championships and stuff you run uh, you won for uh, BJJ? Yeah, like you know what? Like I first in Brazil when I started, I train every day. Morning with the brother of the Israel Souza, yeah. the brother of my of my of my trainer. He was same one of the champions of Rio de Janeiro, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or something. It's a very skinny guy that I was three times his size and strength. I never put him in a bad situation. Every morning I train with him technique 
every noon I lift the weights. I like I like to lift weights, and every night I was I was uh, running uh, the the randori, how you say like uh, the the uh, sparring. Okay. Yeah. Every every night sparring with like tough guys and stuff. Even the girls, like you know, there was like girls because in in a place I was, you like people usually train five more years to become blue belt. Hmm. You don't become blue belt in a year. Yeah, they, it's they, not give, they give me black belt, uh, the blue belt because because I I like I fight like I was champion of Alianza in blue, a white belt, and then after this competition, uh, they give they give me blue belt after the, the Brazilian championship. I was in white belt. I was fifth. So they give me blue belt, and I was uh, against stranger, like you know, there and stuff. So they give me blue belt, but usually you don't get the blue belt, like you know, like you have trained long. And honestly, like he was, uh, they teach you that it's a shame to lose if you blue belt to lose against the white belt. That's like well, yeah, of shame, course. Yeah. But but uh, yeah, and I fought like pretty much every competition in white belt. Then after I, I uh, then after uh, in blue belt uh, in in Rio de Janeiro when I was there. Many, 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 many. Like I have medals at home and stuff. Like you know, but uh, it's it's like yeah, it's tough. It's loud people in categories in Brazilian championship on Ilha de Governador. Uh, when I when I fight, like it was like in lower categories, like 80 people. So you have to like be in 80 people, like in championship. Good. Like I was in my category. I was like I don't know how heavy I was. Like about 90 kilo or something, hmm. 80, 90 something. I, I was 15, 37 people. You know, I I win two, two and lost third mm. match. So mm. I, I ripped the kimono of the guy. Like you know, how strong I was. I ripped his kimono, judo kimono. I ripped, but like you know, it stayed in my hand. <laughs> like you know, you so do you have, have big change. fucking hands, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And same from the people. I always say people like you know like for the hands, uh, climbing rope. With the weight, uh, we 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 climb always with the, with the, with the, with the equipment, with gun and boots and stuff by hand, climbing rope up. That's ultimate strength for arms. Like there is nothing can build you strong arms as like climbing rope. Yeah, you got like fucking, without using legs. Yeah, chimpanzee arms. Brother, <laughs> like you know, arm wrestling. Yeah, arm wrestling. That's like you know, I like I lose once in my life. That was. That was the guy in 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 Montenegro, the guy who climbed the the, the electric post, like some like like mountain guy who climbed electric post to change the things. Is he, electrician, bigger than me, bigger hands and stuff. No way. They, I think he, this guy will be world champion if they, if they fight. You know. Wow. So, but the, after climbing rope, the arm wrestling is like you know it's ultimate thing. You know, I was doing uh, one arm chin chin up with uh, 100, 260 pounds. Like you know, so like yeah. Was that a part of your after, training? No, after no. Like, after okay. Yeah, in French Polynesian, I was like eighty kilo. You know, I was like very skinny. And what did the Just training like, look like? You said that you said that the you guys ran every day, but like what else did you do? Like stre strength training or like what was it like? Well, like you know, it was just like a, like French Polynesian. Like every army, most important thing is running. Yeah, of course. More, it's like you know, and it's not how much you lift because we're gonna put ourselves three. Four guys and lift something if we need, you know. Mm -hmm. But running, you have to be fast, and you ha you have to run because like that's the that's what you do. Like you know, especially when they're chasing you. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, no, but it's true. It's very true. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. The training must so, be intense so, too. Like so, it must be like a very like um, hard like mentally too. You know, they they push you. Like it, it is like it is because you can. You, uh, there is no no fail failing. There is no failing in French Polynesian. You just they put this in your head. There in, in it was the seven chord legend chord. What is that? Uh, what like is the seven chord? Seven code? chords. One one of the chord, like I remember good. It was like he's like, dans la mission, tu agis sans penser à ton bien, tu l'exécutes jusqu'au bout à tout prix. You hmm. can tra translate. So you, you you don't think about yourself. You just execute the goal with a, a, all means that all you know. You just no matter what. No matter what, like so. Yeah. So you don't think about yourself. Mm -hmm. So it's like if they tell you, like the, the officer, when they tell you, go there, you don't you don't ask is dangerous or like can I or like should I or something. The worst question you can do in French religion is like why they're gonna beat you right away if it's not situation that can, they can shoot you. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> so. So yeah, like you know, you don't ask why. Because uh, the officer always like like they say, I'm, I'm like, you're not paid to think, just do it. You're <laughs> paid to up. execute. Yeah. <laughs> just do it. Oh yeah, my god. So yeah. So yeah, like you know, you cannot fail. 
yeah. you have to do. Like, you know, you don't want to sleep in the beginning. Like, you know, if you don't, you don't, if you don't answer, if they ask you something in French, you don't answer, you don't want to sleep till you don't, you don't, you You learn. have to answer in French? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I, like, I came to the, to France, like, I know to say bonjour, but I don't know it's night or day or morning, you know, yeah. that's everything. And Just I was learned. thinking that this language, I never going to learn, but brother, yeah, you learn fast. Very they, fast. Yeah, they give you, they give you somebody who speak a little bit French, or know, know a little bit, and then everything you don't know, this guy is going with you in shit, like, you know, they're going to put you to sleep in the in, in mud all night or m minus 15, you're going to be outside all night, you know, till you learn. So you have you to learn. learn. There is no four months. You, you have to speak. I used to I used to uh, sing like probably more than five songs from the beginning to end without knowing one word I, what I'm singing. And the officers put himself in your face and looking in your eyes and you're singing full power. You have to like sound good. But uh, you don't understand what you're singing. But it sound like, 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 uh, if somebody listen from far, he's gonna hear the song. Is actually song. But like you, I like I don't know. Even even today, sometimes I I like I remember the songs and I, and I'm like okay, that's what it is mean. Like you know, I was singing, I didn't know. Like yeah, you know. no idea. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like yeah. uh, you know a French guy listen to uh, like an English song. Yeah. You know, and he's no like, idea oh, what nah, he's saying, nah, but nah, it sounds nah. good. Yeah, now he's <laughs> going to be like, no, 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 but there is no word coming. But it's going to be uh, like sound same, you know. So Did anybody so, die in training? Like, was uh, it ever like intense enough that uh, like anybody died in training? I think one guy did. Like a heart one, attack or whatever? One, yeah, and I don't know. We, we get this uh, this uh, vaccines for vaccines and then they... Oh, no. They, 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 <laughs> Here we go. They, no, they, <laughs> <laughs> we, we get these vaccines and they wake up, wake up us like uh, three in the morning. They wake up us like, you know, and then put us in line and we were standing in line. So in this moment, I, I feel something that I never feel in my life. Like, you know, I'm like, I lose my, like, you know, I was a kind of to fall and like uh, one, like, I don't know, like, well, something, I feel something that I don't know what is, you know, but one guy felt actually, and we never see him again. So hmm. probably, uh, yeah. you go to like Hawaii. Yeah, probably, yeah, <laughs> probably good chance. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, <laughs> but like, yeah, but French, like the, the, the French Guiana is like, you know, like how it's like, you know, the, the, this, all these guys, they look, work hard and stuff, but they all drinking, they all like, you know, it sometimes is, most of the time is more dangerous, like people behind you than in front of you, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and do you have, like, like you said you were, you were forced to learn, um, like, uh, songs and stuff from the Foreign Legion, like, were you forced to learn any history about the Foreign Legion too? Obviously. Yeah? Obviously. Like obviously. what? Obviously, like when, what's the story of the guy with his arm cut off? Like, there's like his arm. Uh, yeah, you know what I'm yeah, talking about. Yes, yes, like that's Cap Cap Captain Danjon. Okay, uh, he's like he's um, he's um, he's the original. Yeah, he's a Mexico. Okay, that was the Mexico. Like, uh, um, they like they were like fighting like two two thousand two thousand Mexicans against the 60, 60 uh, French Foreign Legion guys for two three days, and they they catch the Captain Danjon. They like, and he, they cut his hand. And kill him. So this hand is like uh, in museum. In a museum in in Aubagne. That's one. Uh, that's a that's a, a first regiment of French World Legion is Aubagne in uh, in, uh, in France, close close to Marseille. And that's the this this day was the thirtieth thirtieth of April. It's called Cameroon. That's that's that uh, day when you can go in any French World Legion uh, quartier and like like visit as a guest, and they they like. Um, Getting like you know like okay so there's there's neighborhoods like for French foreign legioners no no that's that's like I, I'm telling you that like, Cartier, like what do you mean yeah the Cartier that's like military Cartier okay you know, okay, yeah. so, oh, okay okay so okay. you can go there like 30 April if you're in Paris you can go uh, Fort de Norgen okay Fort de Norgen that's like a Cartier old fortress there is French foreign legion you can go inside and like have a drink with French foreign legion guys and oh, stuff cool. and buy some souvenirs and stuff yeah yeah. yeah. So yeah, but yeah, that's the good uh, captain there. But what else? Uh, yeah, go ahead. But uh, but like let's say in in Vietnam, uh, nine thousand French Foreign Legion guys died in Vietnam. Hmm. They were selling them, sending them like you know straight from like prisons and stuff. That like you know just like ask you like twenty years in prison. You want to go fight in uh, like war in Vietnam or you want to like die in prison? Like you know everybody want to go like fight. Like they think they have a chance. But in, in so it's like mercenaries, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. colonists, oh, like, like come on, like everybody, yeah. everybody, like. But, yeah. but this is the power of French Foreign Legion because nobody came there 
like uh, like uh, like a baby. You yeah. know, I came like after the war in like Serbia yeah. there and stuff. I came like I already know and the guns. I know like the things and I live in street. No food, no drinks, no water and stuff like so. So people uh, like like me, they like already know like they're not like regular guys. So everywhere we go, we like we know the things. You know, every country we go, there is somebody with us from this country. You know, mm -hmm. who know exactly what's going on. Yeah. So that's the power like of French Foreign Legion. We have a we have a captain from the nuclear submarine, a Russian guy, like you know, like smartest guy ever. You know, mm -hmm. you know, and then you have a like, guy like some pickpocket. In Marseille, they catch police, catch him. It's like a prison or a French Foreign Legion. French Foreign Legion. They br police bring him to the Cartier, put him in, and it's like, okay, go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. You know, so. But like, what do you mean? There's no, there's no quitting. Like, well, like, what happens? Either you, you, like, once you sign, like, okay, like, I'm going into the French Foreign Legion. It's like, that's it. Yeah. Like, you, either you die or you stay. Like, there's no quitting. Back in time, yeah, they, you, you see the movie with, uh, with. Um, with like uh, Jean Claude Van Damme, Van Damme. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so that back in time you don't quit. Yeah, like you want to quit, they're gonna shoot you. So because that that's a deal. Yeah, they yep. get you from prison out. You're gonna die from French French Foreign Legion. You know. Mm. That I want to tell you in Vietnam, like going back for. It's uh, like you know what one of the combat is like 200 French Foreign Legion guys and captain in front. He would come in front and tell him like we going all on this place. Nobody's gonna come back. Like. We all gonna die, but let's die like a like a legionnaire. Yeah. They go and they all die there. Nine nine thousand French Foreign Legion guys die in Vietnam, and today in the world all together is like about six thousand. There's like no more six thousand. You know. That's an absolute massacre. So man. yeah, massacre. But that's like you signed for. Français par le but, but honestly, honestly, like rotting in prison or like die in combat, like fuck it, like let's die in combat. You know. Like, I, I totally agree. I totally agree. <laughs> Come on, and same like you know they like you, 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 yeah, Valhalla, but like you know, inst at least you're gonna get some drinks, maybe at least. At least. At least, at least. <laughs> oh man, yeah, so. it, it, like we did like. Uh, in, in French Guiana, like, was there any, like, uh, like, what's the most, like, fucked up thing you ever seen, like, in, in French Guiana? <sighs> like, fucked up scene, like, in French Guiana. For you? Yeah. I know you have a big filter. I don't know. Like, what are you, like, what are you, like, looking for? I'm looking for whatever you got, yeah. brother. I, like, the, 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 my, some things I cannot really talk about this. I know. I know. Before I, like, uh, once I want to quit Canada... I'll give you the real, real story. Yeah, good. Okay. <laughs> I promise you this. Good, brother. So good. I might good. be like in five, ten years so I, before I leave Canada. Yeah, yeah. Plans I'll, to leave I'll, Canada. I'll, I'll give up. I think so. I'm alone here. Like you know, no family. Mm. Like you know, girlfriend. Like you know, so. Yeah. So probably just like leave Canada. I know. But yeah, I'm, I'll give a little like story. But like, you know, I have a friend died like in French Polynesian too. Mm -hmm. Then in French Guiana. So. Mm. Yeah. It's okay. So you're yeah, you're close. Yeah, you're close yeah. to it. You're close yeah. to it. Yeah. So, well, but, no, but like I'm trying to be a journalist too, right? So I'm trying. I'm trying to get you, man. But you know, hey, but you promised. Yeah, no, I met. I promised. Yeah, <laughs> like, like I met the people, like the Francois old guy, like he's he's banned by uh, by Mitterrand, like, no, for, by Charles de Gaulle. He's banned from from France for life. He was the mercenary in somewhere in Africa. They banned him from France. They live in French Guiana. I was hanging out with this guy. Uh, it was like fun guy and stuff like in stories like you know yeah, yeah. crazy stories but in in french guiana you have a people who just like get out from the jungle and you know like shoot somebody or cut with machete and run back in jungle you know like they don't really find those people you know like uh, you you talked about before like we we talked about it before like uh, the machete is so dangerous like a machete is a, quite the weapon huh like people like don't really look at it but it's mach machete is like something like like uh, if people do like martial arts, they know what is what is sword, mm -hmm. the katana, Japanese sword. There is no defense, defense uh, 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 bar hands against the sword. No, that of course, doesn't exist. Yeah. So like every anything you have in hands, maybe you have a chance. But if you don't have nothing against sword, you cannot like you cannot fight. There is no way. Same thing is with machete. You know, if the machete is in the hand of the guy. Who, who is like uh, like uh, blind or something? Maybe you have a chance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's not only that. But, Apparently, uh, like if you don't die by the cut, like you'll die by the infection, right? Because yeah. they used to use uh, machetes to cut uh, the forest, right? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Like, that's true. Like same, like you know, like the machete, like you you like sharpening. You know, you know, you have to know what part of the of the blade you sharpen. You don't sharpen all all blade. You don't you don't sharpen hmm. point and stuff. 
because you're getting tired. Like cutting, cutting in jungle with machete, you're getting tired. So when you get tired, that's that the accident happened. Always, like when the people get tired, like, you know, in construction, in anything. But, uh, yeah, uh, cutting uh, like this, this plants and stuff, uh, if you, you have uh, these caterpillars in the jungle, every, every one uh, longer than three centimeter, that's the kind of inch and longer, uh, probably can kill you. Like if they, they have a poison that they can kill you. Really? So sometimes you cut this thing and you cut yourself, yeah, that's infection. And you're like, most likely in, in jungle, you don't have a doctor. You know, we have a, like I used to I used to carry the the, uh, the 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 chainsaw in jungle too big chainsaw, you know we like take off the 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 bar and stuff. But I used to care because because of this. If somebody get in a, like you know hurt or something, once once one time happened, the wind and the big big branches like I say branch from the tree that's like a thirty inch thick branch falling from the eighty feet from up. So we have a three or four guys like wounded like badly, broken skull, broken shoulders, broken like like your know, hands, legs and stuff. So that's what, when I cut like I cut like I find the place where I cut the big tree, is the corner of the river or or if it's in middle jungle, I cut just very big tree that's in base probably ten feet in base. So when I throw them down, uh, the helicopter can can land the the, the rope in. Because okay. you have, you need a permit perimeter twenty meter okay. perimeter what is in feet sixty feet yeah probably sixty feet perimeter uh, clean that helico helicopter can just drop the rope down but sixty meter that's like a, a, a like a soccer stud stadium yeah. to to like to land helicopter down so you have to cut yeah. down a soccer stadium it, worth it, of uh, uh, trees yeah yeah worth of trees but that's like a couple big trees that's gonna crush everything you know. And that's same when you when you cut these big trees. That's special techniques you use, and we use long ropes. And I have a guy standing behind me, very far, and I am attached to the rope. So when I cut the tree, uh, when I when when rope get tight, I look at the guy and I just run behind him, because he see that what side tree is falling. If you don't know, you can run for like ten minutes and still be in under the tree, you know. Like, <laughs> Those are <laughs> to, big trees. To the bushes and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, and when the tree fall down, they just open the space. The sun come down, bro. I have, like, pictures and videos, like, yeah, I can show you. Wow, because yeah, it's so, so dense, right? You don't, like, dense. you don't really realize, like, it's, it's so it's, big. It's 88% humidity all the time. So the most people die in jungle first First is machete. But by, by you right. Like I told you before. Probably. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, but then Axter is, like, a heat stroke. Okay. Heat stroke. The big guys, like the like guys who lift the weights and stuff, it's heat stroke because like you like it's need water. Humid. Muscles need water. Yeah. Yeah. He, he it's humid and you like allow the equipment on you, so there is like no breathing. And one thing we did back in time, I hope they change this now. We were wearing the, the cotton shirts, the the cotton shirts that like dating from seventies. <laughs> you know, the thing is that cotton cotton is nice when it's dry. But one is wet, like you know, the the skin doesn't breathe through. No, mm -hmm. you know, even now, like when I cut trees, I wear always this plastic, you know, this like little lemon under on there. So it's like like yeah, that's the only thing like that's right because the 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 air is still going through, and that's what you need, you know. So, you need you need yeah. breathe, breathable yeah, yeah, material. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but like yeah, heat stroke cotton is a big shirts, thing. Yeah. Cotton yeah. shirts and eighty eight. You know, uh, like um, army, yeah, yeah. army, like regular shirt, but it's full cotton. You know, so and like you're sweating. Sweating a lot too, so like, are, are you more prone to like infection and stuff like that? You know what? Like the thing is, like, like you say, like gangrene. Like you're not scared of that shit. Um, you know what? Like the the when you go to like, especially when the, when the when the machete. That's mm -hmm. a that's a team going in front. When you go with machete, like you 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 first you cutting through. Let's say I'm I'm the like as a Eclarer jungle the, the the stage I do. I'm first with shotgun or last. Every mission through the jungle have a two people like me. One is in front, one is in back, you know. When we do the camp at night, I'm going back and I put booby traps, like R Rambo style and yeah, stuff. Yeah, like Rambo it's style. pretty cool. Very sample. Very sample. How long does it take to make a booby trap? Palex depends where and like, you know, but probably in like 20 minutes, I'm going to do the two, three of them, you yeah. know. So, yeah. And like, you know, it's very, but this booby traps is different. You want to like, when somebody get hit, you have to be, he's dying on a spot. Okay. But like booby. It has to be effective. Yeah, effective. 
But like in booby traps, like regular booby traps you put in jungle is like you want somebody to just get like sick, you know, like you're just mm -hmm. gonna take them out. But the, 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 like the biggest thing they're using there, it's a human shit actually. Really? Yeah. Why? Yeah, you just infection. You just cut, just cut the, the bamboo stick on, on on in an angle. It's very sharp. The bamboo is like very strong, very sharp, and you put the the, the human shit on, and uh, and like you know somebody gets stabbed on this, like he's like gonna die like in forty eight hours. You don't need to, you don't need bullet for this guy. I heard <laughs> stories about the cartel doing that. Yeah. They would they would lace the bullets in in human shit. Yeah. And then like if you don't die with by the bullet wound, you're gonna die by the infection. Oh, for sure. But that, that's like like uh, when you say cartel, when, when, when you say cartels, that's like a. The place I was in Francisco de Orleana in, in Ecuador on Rio Napo, that's like uh, very far. Like doctors are far, man. Like, you know, there is no doctors there and like like uh, these serums and stuff. So you like you're going to die. I get beaten by 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 ants, you know, these big ants, like conga ant. And I have like my t like body. You, temperature. you said this? Yeah. Uh, well, how big are they? Yes, like uh, like inch. <laughs> you know? Oh my so, God! Conga ant in in Ecuador. Okay. So I get the the, the uh, like like body temperature like uh, around forty for two three days just by this bit, bite like you know, and like yeah you're losing weight like fast. You need to drink water when you like let's say we marching we marching forty five minutes fifteen off like you stand with fifteen you don't take your bag off your shoulders. Because you should have like already infected, uh, like you know. And if you if you take off, you cannot put them back. You know, by doing like cutting with machete and stuff, your your shoulders by humidity and stuff. You yeah, like, yeah. there is no skin on the shoulders. You know, oh. so that hurts, man. So, raw. Oh yeah. So raw skin. Oh yeah. Holy uh, shit, shoes man. Shoes too. Like you know, the feet does like. But you have to do shower every night, uh, like even in dirty water. If you don't do like you've done, like in in five days, you don't want to be able to move. Uh, just infections and stuff, you know. So, so you have you have to shower, shower even in dirty water. You every night you shower, and we use this savon Marseille, you know. What is the savon Marseille? So, you know this the square square piece of the big so uh, soap. soap. Yeah, that's that's like that's like we use this for everything, washing okay. everything. Yeah. So, so e uh. even though they were really intense, that you still got your. Your bar of soap. Yeah, yeah, bar, bar of soap. Yeah, he's, he's there. Good. He's like on the rope. So French. And he's on the rope. He's on the rope. Some of Marseille, they think With a baguette that, and a bottle the, of wine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wine, like, you know, like, you know, you, you, you cannot care a lot. Yeah. You know, but sometime in mission, we bring the, like, a couple bottles of champagne. When we get on a point where we want to be, we open the bottle and champagne. And I have one picture. The, the officer opening the bottle of champagne, you're going to see on a picture everybody keeping mouth. <laughs> like this because you're so thirsty when you see the champagne you're just keeping mouth very like tight like you know like you want to drink water you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. and on picture is funny you see everybody like everybody's everybody <laughs> wants to drink so bad oh yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah but like that's funny oh my god solly it's already been an hour brother that's awesome really yeah really yeah <laughs> hey we're gonna have you back okay we're gonna have you back no oh, worry, okay, don't worry no about problem. that Hey, guys, thank you for uh, tuning in. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And guys, um, go support Solomon, okay? If you, get, if you need some trees, <laughs> if you need some trees to cut, go get uh, Solomon Tree Services, okay? Number one services in Ottawa. So guys, tell a friend to tell a friend, and I'll see you soon.